This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 652. Tuesdays, we've been talking professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, and we are ready to talk some wrestling. We got a whole crew here and even more coming later for Mayhem Mania. First of all, on the line from Beacon, New York, wherever the hell that is, uh, the only Mayhemmer with the future endeavored letter from the WWE. It is Mad Mike Sorg. I am the shining light above New York City. The what? <laughs> the shining light. The beacon, if you will. Um, okay. Also yes. with us, he is back. He's coming at us from Monroeville, PA. The Riz. Yes. This time I've stayed inside. I have not come two bridges and two tunnels to be there with you, Storm. No, in this like perfect I'm in the, weather. I in this perfect weather. <laughs> He's afraid Riz, I to stay home. He's and, afraid. You know, it's too nice outside. Get in your yeah, car. Yeah, pretty much. Ugh. Pretty much. Uh you don't know what's out there, Sword. No, yeah, you, you don't do. know. You don't know what's you out do. there. You do. You do know. You know what's out there. I don't know what we're talking about. Chupacabras. Chup- there you go. Also with us back in the studio, <clears throat> the uh, evil genius behind Rise Wrestling, Marcus Mann. Oh, hey. 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 It, I, this is, uh, I think, Mayhem Show or Sorgatron Media, uh, Marcus Mann Week. Uh, it like, is. Just like Shark Week. Where I show up multiple times to this, this week. It is. We did. We did do something interesting in that, and 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 unplanned, but it's just like timing worked out. Yeah. Right. Where you're here tonight, and you're going to be here tomorrow night for intergender panel two. Yeah. Um. More intergender. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so. Inter to gender. No. Inter <laughs> Sorg, 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 I have I have a name for you. Mm. The mixed banter challenge. The mixed banter challenge. <laughs> I. That's very heavy, um, but uh, <laughs> in wording, I think. But uh, no, we we are going to have and a lot of a lot going into that. I have a lot to talk about. I think based on just response to the posting on it. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> crazy, right? I've never, I've never posted the announcement for a podcast episode. Yeah. That turned into debate. Yes. So uh, we'll, we'll <clears throat> maybe touch on that a little bit later. But anyways, this is a Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thanks to our friend Basic Sixes for the intro music for this and many shows in the Wrestling Mayhem Show network. And you can drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group and page. Uh, and you can uh, tune into that page every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live and join us in the chat room, just like out of surgery, Jack Pollock in the chat room, BC Steel, Tina Keys, Ty Cross, Alex Cross, Alex Cross, yeah, no, Alex Cars out there in Cali, Dave Podner, Bradley, so many more hanging out with us tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us here live on the feed. And uh, you can also check us out with our streaming partners, the 405 media.com that carries us every, every, every night, seven days a week, 9 PM Pacific time, noon Eastern time. And also thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, uh, including our fan of the show. $1 level contributors. Bo diggity. Woo. Woo. Ed Berg, Bobby, Bobby F. J. Town, and Tina Keys, and at the Pocky Club, five dollar level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Bradley, Doc Remedy, Dave Podner, and the newest uh, member of the club is Kyle Turner, and also the Pizza Club, ten dollar level, helping us out with those Mayhem Mania graphics. Our friends at the, Ref- the Wrestling Revolution dot com. So uh, with that, you guys can support the show too at Patreon dot com slash Wrestling mayhem show and especially now there's a lot of incentive with mayhem mania going on you got some special perks especially the patreon in the bank week where you get a lot of extras and and can really 
enhance <coughs> or mess up our Mayhem Mania workings um, when we get to that. So <laughs> I don't really have, um, let's say, an agenda for this week uh, because I feel like there's there's enough there's kind of enough for us to roll into um this week and i know marcus you're not watching you know recent wrestling i guess <laughs> ah boy so like i watched i watched the royal rumble mm-hmm. um the last thing i watched before royal rumble that would have been like current product was war games Working. Wow. Oh, okay. So you're not that far off. No, so, you're not. Was that, that Survivor Series? Yeah, Survivor Series. Weekend. Survivor yeah, Series weekend was like yeah, the last time yeah. I watched something. Yeah, so it was Honestly, like November. Not yeah. a whole lot changed in that time. No, I watched no. a few little like I watched like 15 or 20 minutes of Raw here or there. Um, That's really all you should be. Yeah, definitely not three hours. Um, definitely not. Three I hours. tape it and then uh, I usually just delete it. Um, and watch something else. I've been watching a lot of Young Justice uh, for Jack Pollock. Yes! 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 Can we just talk about Young Justice for an hour? So I'm I like, knew this was going to oh. happen. So, like, I haven't finished three episodes, so let's not spoil the end oh. of season three. But uh, I did rewatch <laughs> Mar- everything. Marcus, Marcus yeah. uh, when you finish... Yeah, I know. You and I are just going to have to have a whole separate podcast because I need to talk to someone about it. Because... Yes. I, this season oh, has been fantastic. Fuck. Now... Uh, I, I like that they cut down the cast from season two, uh, and we didn't, like, I don't need, like, Lagoon Boy and all that stuff, like, let's focus on the core mm-hmm. Young Justice group, and they brought some new characters in, I'm very happy, I, like, the DC network is good, if people haven't got it yet, they should get it, is what I'm saying. I, I like the product, I don't like the actual app. I, the, like, what are you using it on? Fire, uh, Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, see, like... I don't have anything for my TV like that, so I've just been plugging my laptop into my TV and doing ah, it that way, okay. and it's actually worked out great for me on that. Okay. Yeah. So I so far I like, but like the iPad app's pretty good too. Like I watch it on my iPad. That okay. and I'm rewatching Game of Thrones right now. <laughs> so I don't watch wrestling. Like, no, no. The problem is, is like, and this is this. I, I think I complain about this every time I'm on the show, uh, as far as like modern wrestling is like if I'm going to watch wrestling. I have an inbox full of indie matches mm-hmm. that people are like, hey, can you watch my match? Or, hey, I want to get booked. Can you watch this for me and tell me if I'm good enough to get booked so on your like show? So, like, wrestling is a job at this point. Yeah. yeah. So, if it's Don't like... Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you're like, uh, I could watch Raw, if, or I could watch, like, the thousand messages that I have in my inbox right now that I haven't mm-hmm. gotten to. But, like... If I watch Raw, SmackDown, I don't even tape because I just I don't have time for it. Mm. My DVR is already taping the Flash, uh, so I gotta watch that. But uh, Marcus, we'd be best friends if I was down there. <laughs> so like, <laughs> if I watch Raw, I, like I fast forward, it's and I'll stop for. That's all I know who's good. Mm. I'll stop for Elias. I'll stop for Cena if he's on. I'll stop for Heyman and Les- Lesnar. I'll stop and watch a Finn Balor match for about five to six minutes, and then the heat will happen, and then I'll keep moving. Um, <laughs> what else? Um, uh, Ruby Riot. I'll stop and watch. I'll stop and watch Ruby Riot. Yeah, we were that. Yeah, yeah. Because I've I've met Heidi a few times, and she's like the nicest person. So I'll stop and watch her stuff. And I like Sarah Logan too. I really like. So I, I'll watch, I think, I'll know, watch Riot Squad is, stuff. Is that where we're at right now for like the general person? Like yes. you just pick up the hits. You know, actually, partners in the chat room saying it's like porn stars don't like looking at porn. Hey, we'll have a porn star here Thursday, and I'll ask her that question. <laughs> um, legit, we're going to yeah. have one on the couch. Is it Sean Phoenix again? No, yes. Wow. Yes, Sean Phoenix <laughs> um, is going to be on the casting couch. So, yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say, you're having a casting couch. <laughs> no, it's it's <laughs> legit. It's part of Pittsburgh Current Podcast. Uh, yeah. Check it out Thursday morning over We're there. We're already talking about the worst questions he could ask. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, uh, you've been doing indie wrestling for a little bit of time. Like, once you get into, like, indie wrestling, I, I feel like understand. when you're watching the current product, you stop more from people you know. Yeah, like so. If I'm watching NXT, I, like I will stop for Chris Hero or Ray Rowe or those types of guys because it's like, yeah. oh yeah, I know them. I'll watch their stuff. Yeah, over like I don't know who this guy is, so I'm just like, I'll just keep going. I'm not there yet. Okay, but I feel collectively like I want to see what Raw is doing. I want like yeah. I'm still in the Monday night is the night I watch wrestling. Well, you watch. I mean, you do it for a job. Well, like you have to recap. I don't for a know. living. I gotta tell you, I don't know if I would t- watch Raw as. You know, as um, you know, habitual. Yeah. If it wasn't for the and, and here's the thing: I can't tell you if Raw is a good product or not because I don't watch it. Right. Like 
I know I know it's not a product for me, right? But I don't know if it's a good product or not. And I like we've had this debate on the show before about like NXT versus Raw and like who the market is. Mm. Like NXT's marketed to me. Like that's who they want. I pay for their subscription to watch that product. Mm. Raw isn't marketed to me and they don't care about me no. in any sort of way. So it's like really not my product. I'll stop for like I said, I'll stop for Lesnar. And that's okay. I, I think that we're in this world where, you know, y- y- a lot of people are got, maybe got exposed to that NXT product from Halftime Heat this week. Yeah, you know, with Ricochet and Dream and and, all, and Gargano and all those guys, and that now introduces you to that. And and Even I love a friend of the show Doug was talking about it on Twitter. Yeah, Doug from, uh, from Should I Drink That? Right. Yeah, because yeah, he signed up for the free trial for the Rumble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he ended up watching Halftime Heat, and he's like, "This is the first I've seen of NXT." I'm like, "Do yourself mm-hmm. a favor." Watch every takeover. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. NXT, is, yeah, NXT is a different product. Like, all of them. Like NXT is marketed towards me. NXT UK is specifically marketed to me. Like that's a product that like is marketed specifically of what I want to watch. You as a British individual. Yes, that's yes. a really fun. Now show. I'm just really into cool jackets. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, yeah, that's like that that environment that feel everything about it is like marketed to people like me who who want to watch wrestling. Where like. SmackDown Raw is just like it's not for me, mm-hmm. um, and that's okay, I mm-hmm. guess. I mean, I don't know. That's the thing is, I just don't know who it's for anymore because I'm like at a weird age where I'm right. like, I don't know who this right. is for. It, it's for the general. It's for the kids. It's for it's, yeah. it's it's the access point when you're flipping through on Monday night and say, oh, what's this guy about, right? You know, or maybe you got over there from total. I mean, there's so many, and we talked about those with the total divas. Like, there's so many inputs yeah. now. Like they're like kind of people that are catching because of like total divas, total divas or the total bellas, bellas on, on, on uh, E or Ms. and Mrs. Like are people that have no reason. It's like, I'm going to watch this reality show about a circus and now I'm going to go watch a circus. Yeah. You know, like you're not a circus fan. You're a reality show fan yeah. and you learned about the behind the scenes. Now you're interested and in that, what the show you know, is like. You know, it's a crazy point is like, and that's a really like an interesting thing is like, I talked to my girlfriend about this a, a lot. Um, I don't like those like Hallmark Channel Christmas movies. Like I'm not gonna watch those. Those aren't for me. Okay, they're better, but they're for my mom. But they make. I, I, I'm not joking. They make like 30 or 35 a year or something mm-hmm. like crazy. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. I would mm-hmm. watch a documentary about how they make 30 Christmas movies a year. Yeah. What's the scheduling for that? How are they getting writers and directors? Are they filming them all in the same sets? How do they rotate that? The actors. Like I would watch if you made like a Netflix 10 part docu-series about hallmark channel making the christmas movies i'm in and that's like i feel like the reality shows are the same thing for wrestling of like i don't want to watch wrestling but if you give me this like behind the scenes stuff like i'm in like i watched that wwe 24 for mania Mm -hmm. i'm in Mm -hmm. now they tricked me because they started with Brock Lesnar throwing the title events. So oh, you're like, yeah. oh, I'm in. Like, I'm in. Talk. And there's like nothing else to that. We didn't talk about it's that just, at all. That was. That's that, just honestly, Brock. Like, I've seen all the 24s. That was the most lackluster 24 that they've had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they got me with Lesnar. Mm-hmm. And that's just like. And the thing is about it is like, man, I saw some, like, some dude post on Twitter of like, Brock Lesnar clearly disrespects the title. Like, why does Vince even let him be champion? So, like, if Vince doesn't like him, what's he have on the company? And I was like, dude, you're working yourself into a shoot here, man. <laughs> like, you are, <laughs> like, it's just Brock being Brock for the cameras. Like, he knew yeah. the camera was there, so he's just playing his character. Like, yeah. That's Brock. Yeah. Like, it's, there's a reason you never see Brock do anything else because, like, he's living up to his character. Except reading magazines in the back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I think that might be his character there too. Um, he likes a good magazine. Marcus. Yes. Marcus, since you, since the last thing you saw was the Rumble, yes. what, what do you think of Becky Lynch? Um, I think I said I think this was a while ago, like right before Survivor Series, I tweeted that I think Becky Lynch is arguably the best in the world right now. Okay. I think there's an argument made that she's the best in the world like right now, like total package. Um, now I did not like her match with Charlotte, the last woman standing match, Mm -hmm. um, just for some weird psychology reasons. That's like, um, anytime I watch a match now, I have like the Shirley Doe hammer in the back of my head that'll hit over you like over and over again of like that psychology doesn't make sense. That does not make sense. You were in a figure four and a ladder and then you just got up and stood and walked around for like another 10 minutes. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So like there's weird psychology things that'll bother me that like. 
Edric is the first one to text me like, shut up. It's a good match. Just shut up. <laughs> so, so like little things like that. But I think she's right now at the top of anyone's game. Um, and that includes any of the men on the roster too. Mm-hmm. That doesn't include Brock Lesnar. I, I think in our, and this is some, <laughs> yeah. Cause Brock's a different, <laughs> yeah. Brock's a completely different category. You can't put him in a wrestling category. No, no. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, for uh, different reasons, Ronda too, like they're, they're, they're there for different yes, reasons. Yeah. Yes. And no, not Ronda, to have good matches. Well, yeah. Ronda's more there for marketing, but Ronda, yeah. because she does raws and because she's on the show more, mm-hmm. uh, I think you can, you can compare her a little more to the regular roster where Brock is a Brock is in the same category, <laughs> with like the undertaker, he's a spectacle. Like he's right. not there to be like, yeah, Br- yeah. Brock's a legacy at this point. Like yeah, Brock yeah. taker flair, even Shawn Michaels, Michaels even, to a certain even, extent. Even Triple H. Triple H. Mm-hmm. You don't like you yeah. can't compare Becky Lynch to Triple H. No. No. So it, it, Although it, Becky Lynch did punch Triple H in the face today on SmackDown. Man, I love Triple H. Oh, really? It was pretty yeah. great. It oh. was pretty great. It That's was pretty so, great. She just clocked him right. Triple H really like we'll get into it later, I'm sure, but Triple H really wants to intergender. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it's Stephanie. It, I think it's Triple H like Triple I H, want like I want Triple to do it. H was the one that took the Ronda Rousey move at WrestleMania last yep. year. If that's mm-hmm. not a signal there, he, then I don't know what I, is. I, I really think he's the driving force behind it. Mm-hmm. I think you'll see it. The weird thing is, is like it's it's coming up on the main roster first, where it's like I thought it would like peek its head into like NXT first, right, right. Like on those NXT house shows and stuff, you might see it or here or there. But no, they like they've he's got it in the main roster more so, than so. There, this is this is something, and this is actually something I will. Uh, I have a, a Ronda Rousey thing I want to get to here in the second segment, but in the meantime, I like Ronda Rousey, so it's going we'll, we'll to upset everyone when we get but there. But on the intergender side, I was going to bring this up on the panel tomorrow, and maybe I will again. Sure. Um, I'll be here. Like, There's been a lot of commentary about like Beth Phoenix. Listen to Beth Phoenix on the Q&A on Edge and Christian this week. And she talked about her oh, appearance. I thought, like, legit, you were pressing a button, and I legit thought that we were that technology advanced. We were like, take a listen to this Beth Phoenix. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then you were just like, like going back in, it was like, oh, oh. I forgot to hit record on the backup. That's all it was. That's I legit was. was like, man, you're so prepared. <laughs> Holy crap. I went, man, I <laughs> wish I, I was that prepared for this show. I don't even have button. an agenda. I'm looking at the ads in the document that Missy put in there. Jeez, I We've haven't been seen asking what she's for a soundboard. I, I haven't you. I haven't seen if she's changed it yet. We'll find that out when I start to do an ad. But anyways, <laughs> oh good she didn't. Um <laughs> What was my point? Beth Phoenix talked about her first time at the Royal Rumble and talking about even back then, like in WWE, the like the locker room is behind this happening. Yeah. Right? They're like, go out there and kill it. There's not this like you know, oh, this is you know, crap. And maybe they are, but but generally, like they are supportive of of this. You know, and yeah. again, I think, and I think the biggest thing is looking at that Rumble match and look at the people that were involved in, you know, the Nia Jax thing. You yeah. know, was Randy Orton who was like, if you're think like has to, you would probably think is one of the most more old school. Yeah. minded guys that would be a third generation Especially from if old you read his guys. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Ray Mysterio. He's, he's uh, Randy Orton is such a um. Rip Rogers guy too, mm-hmm. and Rip Rogers is. I don't know if you know much about Rip Rogers, Rip is a very old school like right. type of guy. So I mean, you would think it, it, it maybe just persona perception yeah. and everything. You think Randy would not be the guy that would be mm-hmm. ushering this in, yeah, right. And I think that's that's really. I, I think that's that's really cool that that's happened. I, Randy is such a weird. Like I have this conversation a lot about Randy. I want to do. We'll circle back, but I do want to say this about Orton because like Orton got like. The problem with Randy Orton is he was on TV so much mm-hmm. and he did so much that people kind of got bored by Randy Orton over the years. But like looking back at Randy Orton, he may be one of the most underrated wrestlers we've ever seen because he is really, really good. His psychology is unmatched. He is phenomenal. If you go like, back and watch his... like those Randy Orton and Edge matches mm-hmm. and uh, like some of the, especially like his uh, intercontinental title run when he, when he's first breaking it and Randy Orton is so good and everyone just looks at him as, and like now it's just like, Oh, Randy Orton's on TV again. Great. Cause mm-hmm. he just got so overused, mm-hmm. but man, is he fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it's just such a shame that like when Randy Orton came out in the Royal Rumble, I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. But no, he's, he's such a brilliant worker. And the fact that he did with Nia is like, 
he's also a Triple H guy. He's yeah. one of Triple H's boys, oh, yeah. and so like, oh, yeah. he gets it, and he's buying in. Uh, uh, Ty Cross is saying, if Randy Orton will take a shoulder tackle from a woman and sell it, no one in the industry can still it. He's Randy Orton. Yeah, Randy Orton right. is a yeah. Hall of Famer, easily. Uh, Randy Orton. And I have a small hall, and I'll put Randy Orton in. Um... Well, look at that face. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just by itself, that quote seemed weird. Uh, a small hall? Or... Yes, I don't know. Um, it, 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 Randy Orton, on a side note, <laughs> I watched Edge and Christian, and they actually did the uh, poop in the bag, oh, the poop, in, poop in the purse oh, yeah, reference. They, they did the whole I got to yeah. start watching that show, because like, I've seen a couple of clips, and I was like, oh, man, they don't care. They they go they Oh, go they do not care it. at all. It, it's amazing how little they care. It's like, oh, it's like Vince is definitely not watching this thing. Yeah. And it's in the, you know, there, there is so like much Vince content. Is, like, he has time yeah, to watch exactly. everything. Like, the fun, the, like, the funny thing is they uh, they have this segment. Will we? Will we? Will WWE talk about it? And oh, they show sure. a picture of CM Punk, mm. and they're like, "Can we talk about?" And they're saying CM Punk, but it's bleeped out. <laughs> <laughs> That's someone saving their job. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, but but it's the gimmick. Yeah, yeah, it's the gimmick. Like they know they're being bleeped, but they keep saying it. God, that's they don't <laughs> care, man. And I love. I've always loved Edge. Like, I've always been an Edge guy because mm-hmm. he always walked that weird line of like, mm-hmm. uh, can I get away with this on TV? But also, I'm good enough to get away with all of this on TV. Mm-hmm. But he's always walked that line. And he's like, he has oh. stepped over, blown up the line um, many times, drawn drawn a circle around its dead body yeah. and and pissed on it. Him and Bradshaw. Bradshaw walks some lines sometimes where you were like, how is he getting away with this? And the yeah. only answer was Vince was laughing. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the only reason. Like, mm-hmm. have you heard the story that that's why our truth is still there? Because he makes Vince laugh. Yeah, because Vince loves. Like, I believe Vince it. finds him hilarious. Oh, I believe it. And, and like it. that's why he's there. Dude, by the way, I don't read the dirt sheets or anything. Did we? Did anyone ever get to the bottom of was the our truth Nakamura finish a botched finish? No. It was that was all no, planned. I, yeah. Okay. Because originally, oh, like yeah, when I watched it, I was like, "Well, that's that the that it is looks, a hint. that is a hint of botchiness." Yeah. Like it has a no, hint of like no since they they had the match with Rusev right after that that was okay definitely what what I said what I when it was happening because I turned my girlfriend I said either that was all planned or they are very very good of okay live this is what we need to do to fix everything yeah like, no I get like it may not have come off as smooth as it, as it was supposed to but that was planned yeah mm. like the thing that was like always gets me and I kind of like it's my secret like I know it's like kind of botchy is like when they counted the three. And they were going into the next spot. Like they were running a spot after that. And I was like, oh, that's not supposed to happen. So, and then I was like, oh, they know they, that though. So they're working me now. Like if, they're working if they backwards. Show a replay, if they show a replay, yeah. it was 85% planned. Okay. <laughs> like, no, like, no, like sometimes they'll show a replay of stuff that wasn't planned. Like when yeah. uh, Liv got kicked in the face. Yeah. Or when Naya hit Becky in the back of the head. Like, ordinarily in real time they yeah. wouldn't show replays of that but they might show them after the fact but if they showed a replay of it it was, was all it was also it. the placement of it which was kind of perfect to me because it was like um it was in the middle of them hyping house shows on the bottom of the screen which is that moment yeah. that is like nothing ever important happens when they're doing that uh and the fact that they did it in that moment and all of that made it feel so much more like it was a shoot and i was that's what i was like man this is really good this is really well, well done like if you got it, me for a second like you're doing a really good job of, of convincing me that this is all like not planned but, but it's, it's, like, also, it's like when they do the stuff after the codas on the pay-per-views yeah 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 they go especially takeover right mm-hmm. um like, yeah what, what after after the copyrights is, is chomp time right yeah um yeah, you have to wait for Made in Florida. But it's kind of like something like the R Truth thing. Like, I'm glad they're still doing that because it kind of gives that, like, oh shit, anything can happen thing. Yeah. Which is, there I was, feel like they've gone away yeah. from. They didn't hit the music right away. They didn't have a nameplate for them backstage. Mm-hmm. They did so much of the stuff that you just kept going, like, ah? And I was, like, waiting for a dirt sheet thing to come out of, like, mm-hmm. okay, this is 100% confirmed. This was always the plan. Or, uh, hey, they kind of just ran on the fly here. Like, the reason they did the Rusev match is because that match was supposed to go way longer and they need to fill time. So they sent Rusev out. Like mm. I like I could believe mm. that like they did it well enough that I could have believed it would have been shoot if if a dirt sheet came out and told me it was a shoot. Yeah, um, that's how, like and when I, that's one of the few things I have actually watched in the last couple of months. I was like flipping through and I was like, oh, mm. I'll stop on SmackDown for a couple of minutes and like it was really well done. Um, 
And then people were like, poor Nakamura. I was like, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nakamura will be just fine, guys. He's fine. Yeah, he's gonna, uh, just he's fine. Gonna be fine. When, he's back, when he's back in New Japan. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. When, um, he's, when, he, when he's main eventing at AEW. Going back to... Here's the thing about Nakamura. He might be making enough money that he doesn't give a fuck. It is very Sorg. True. Sorg, you can't main event the pool party. <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day about AIW and it made me laugh really hard. That was until AIW has a show, it's just a t shirt company. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like that's my philosophy. It's just pro wrestling tees. That's all it is. It's a pro wrestling tees store until they actually do something. And you're like, all right, like I'm interested, but interested it's enough like, to like global force wrestling. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say it's more like global force wrestling was. Yeah, like it hey, was we signed uh, we signed Pentagon Phoenix. Great. When can I watch you? To, yeah. We don't know. To what? Yeah, yeah, and that's I've I, I've seen a lot of people talk about AEW, and I just like I'm in that wait and see. Like it it might be something. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Like and, I don't know. Also, are these guys these guys are getting signed? Are they getting paid already? That I don't, yeah. Like, or are they making money per show? I was, I think I was poking at last night. Uh, there was a picture of uh, Britt uh, with Adam Cole, Britt Baker with Adam Cole uh, at, at the facility at the Performance Center. And I yeah. was like, look at that AEW contracted uh, <laughs> wrestler yeah. at, at WWE. I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, but... Finn just posted a picture with him and Jericho a little bit ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was I, don't, I, don't Vince Nobody cares. Cares. I don't think Vince cares and anything the about lines what Jericho blurred. does. No. Like, uh, I think Vince is, like, in that, like, Jericho can do whatever he want. Yeah. Jericho could, like, like pee on a bunch of WWE merchandise and, like, talk about how awful the company was and then, like, come back two months later and Vince would be like, glad to have you back. Yeah. Like, you made waves. Good for you. Let's get, let's get you Jericho back on TV. Jericho wore his New Japan shirt on Raw. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Like, oh, shit, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Jericho wore like his, his Hot New Topic J- shirt. Yeah. He wore for his new japan merch on raw like well, he can also, literally do whatever he wants edge and christian are also wearing their like pro wrestling t-shirts yeah on the show like uh, the paul smackett shirt and everything so yeah no it's this, this is a whole different world there's a We're level seeing, we see ring of honor and tna footage regularly on yeah. wwe network yeah there's mm-hmm. a, there's a level with vince now where i, I think vince isn't in everything day to day that he doesn't micromanage as, as much of the, like the footage stuff and the, no. the network. And stuff. He, does. He, he doesn't have time to do that. So I think I, that's, I think the only thing he really micromanages is raw. Yeah. I think he, mm-hmm. I think he TV, like the big TV, he still micromanages. Um, but like, he's not, he just doesn't have time. No one has the time to micromanage everything. Like he would try to do. That's just impossible. So, like, I think that's a level of it. It's also, like, if you ever hear stories from older guys, you just get to a level where Vince just, you've done enough for Vince that he just doesn't care what you do anymore. He just trusts mm-hmm. you. You know, like, you hear the stories of, like, Shawn Michaels about, like, when Shawn was hurt and he was backstage. Like, they just let Shawn do whatever he wanted backstage. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was pilled well, up, like, that- passed out on couches, <laughs> and, and they were like, why is Shawn here? And he's like, is it Shawn Michaels? Mm-hmm. Like, they Vince also didn't want him. him to leave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, Vince, I mean, it, it, it's like when you watch The Dark Knight and you see Bruce Wayne passed out in the conference room. Like, <laughs> well, what are we really gonna do? But Vince, like, he lets Steve Austin do whatever he wants. He let those guys, like The Rock, can do whatever he wants. The, like Hogan, for a certain period of time, could do whatever he wanted <sighs> on TV. Like, there's a level of guys that Vince trusted enough that I think Jericho's now in that list. I think Edge is in that list. Orton's in that list. Cena's in that list mm-hmm. of guys that just like. Randy Orton can do whatever he wants basically on TV. And who's like, it's weird that I think like, is Samoa Joe getting to that point? Because it seems like Samoa Joe is no, just doing whatever no, he wants. No. Uh, <laughs> Samoa like, Joe has not even had a WrestleMania match yet. Yeah, AJ but, Styles is probably the closest. One. AJ, yeah, we, AJ can do whatever he wants. But Joe is after, like. After the, the interview that he had, yeah, he's, he's very close to that. Joe just like does interviews, and I was like, no one wrote that. Mm-hmm. Joe's saying what he wants out there. No one wrote that. And you just go like, well, what's that? What's anyone gonna do? <laughs> well, all these guys we're talking about are guys that we saw over the years on the indies, and you never know who's gonna pop up on these shows that maybe you're watching today. And uh, the one place, hey, there was just a show this past weekend we we're just talking about before the show, mm-hmm. Rise Wrestling, uh, just released today, the February show where uh, there was a, the beginnings of a tag team tournament, as well as a pretty pretty hellacious three way. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the grand championship, which maybe didn't end the way a lot of people wanted. No. But with Derek Direction. <laughs> I, I guarantee you about 99.9% of the fans were not happy. The very vocal fans not happy with what's yeah. going on. But I think can... like just Donardo and Kalo were, who had signs <laughs> were the only <laughs> two fans that were like, oh. That is true. Yay, Derek. But of course, part of that is all available over at IndieWrestling.us for the VOD and IndieWrestling.network. Uh, thank everybody. Jeez, a, a big explosion of subscribers. Thank you, everybody, that's been signing up in the last month here, uh, where you do get every uh, new Rise of Wrestling and actually everything that we have in the Indie Wrestling catalog from uh, last February on in Rise Wrestling, as well as the new Uprise show of uh, the the even newer talent that you may see up on uh, uh, other shows in the area or. Who knows where these days, right? Um, so much else from RWA, IWC, Premier Wrestling, and so much more over at IndieWrestling.network. Uh, Do- Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories, Breakfast with Champions, which now every champion is not a champion. Uh, but still, it is a time capsule <laughs> worth listening to. I didn't realize that. I, that was the first thing I thought of after last week's show. Oh, so, geez. There's a little bit from uh, the main event there between Derek Direction, Lee Moriarty, and the Reaper, Matt Connard. We got to do a. I think uh, BC Steel is trying to sell you on a on a uh, like breakfast with uh, like him, me, and Dombrowski. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've heard that yet. Yeah, he wants to sell you on that of just doing like a me, him, and Dombrowski like round table like I'm breakfast down with one it. i'm down with it okay will you um pour beer on your cookie will, I pull, will i pull a, a jack f and pollock yeah jack f and pollock that's right <laughs> buy a shirt he's hurt oh i'm sorry apparently apparently the audio like we did not mute that uh so i will um have to fix that uh so no go check that out of course at indie wrestling dot network um and uh <laughs> And uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, just five ninety nine seven day trial uh, to for free, so you can check out all that content. Watch all the Duke and Does in that time if you want, and learn about Kamala at Eaton Park in his PJs, um, talking about pulling a gun on Andre. Um, so thanks uh, for that. And uh, so with that, so whenever we have Marcus Man on, we uh, just like to give him the floor. <laughs> on uh the latest of why john cena is amazing as he does where's the towel i had a towel here i oh, had one man. of the the you can't see me towels yeah it's, 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 here's the, the crazy show. thing about that i own so no it's green invisible thing. because you can't see it yes yes yeah. I, I know somebody out there was saying that they're i think bobby fj town has the um invisible john cena pop on order now okay yeah right yeah i uh i, tr- I, I own tried zero john cena it. merchandise Jeez. isn't that crazy how is it? Everybody should at least like gift you John Cena I merchandise. Amazon? I don't. I don't own any merchandise. Like in general. Oh yeah, I do have the John Cena card that I was given, uh, but not like I don't own any active wrestlers on TV's T-shirts or like any of their merchandise. Like it's all indie guys merchandise I have. Like it's all those guys I'll buy, um, and I don't know why. Like I just like. I, I, I don't like a lot of the designs of t-shirts for like WWE stuff. There's not, I don't know. They're just not as cool. I don't know why. You're like a merch snob. I kind of am. Um, like I just, their, their stuff's very like cookie cutter. It's just not as cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but seeing is like some of the stuff, the, like the, the old AWA Cena style shirt was cool. And there was like some cool ones, but uh, he's been one that's had good merch over the years uh, as opposed to like, all of AJ Styles merch looks exactly the same to me. Mm-hmm. Like I can't tell one AJ Styles thing. And uh, some as, of it looks like Roman Reigns merch. Yeah. It, like it looks like the same person's doing it. Mm-hmm. Like it literally does. Um, anyway, uh, I don't like skinnier Cena. I think I, I, I think I want to go back bulking. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want bulked up John Cena again. I okay. like, I want power lifting uh giant muscle cena and the less like crossfit cena i don't like it is he vegan um, now or is he like eating less meat or something i don't know what's going on with them maybe marcus do, do i dare ask about the hair, <sighs> the hair. what is the verdict <laughs> i get what he's doing i get it <laughs> i do <laughs> trust me 
He's never had hair. Like, he was always had, like, a short crop, even when he was, like, in the indies. Mm. I get it. He's trying to change his life around. With, uh, you know, <laughs> I feel for the guy. I follow him on Twitter, and, like, he, like, posts. Sometimes he posts those motivational things out, and I'm like, is this for me, or is this for you, John? Like, no, no, no. Any, no, no, no let's, point. let's make this clear. Anybody that posts motivational stuff, yeah. it's for them. Yeah. Like, I feel that's like John being like, all right, John, let's get through another day. I definitely tweet motivational stuff, and it's the shit I need to hear. Let's be <laughs> truly honest about this, okay? Yeah. I, I tweet anti motivational stuff because sometimes that's what I need to hear. Mm. I didn't know that he was hurt uh, or hurt, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and he wasn't in the Royal Rumble. So, like, I definitely picked John Cena to win the Royal Rumble. And they got to, like, 24, and I was like... Oh, no. I was like, oh, Cena's not in the Rumble, is he? And they're like, no, <laughs> dude. They said that in the pre-show. I was like, that's the pre-show. It was on for two hours. I'm not watching what did they that. Say? Who did they say beat him up? Like, um, the McIntyre? Like, Drew McIntyre assaulted by, him? Yeah, injured by Drew McIntyre. The, the rumor then Braun took his place or something? That... I, I don't know who took his place technically, I think but... Braun, 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 Braun technically. Okay. Yeah. But well, like, the rumor going the rumor going around was that it was supposed like Lars Sullivan was supposed to injure out Cena. Okay, and then that would have been amazing. What's going on with Lars Sullivan? They give him the Nathan Jones treatment or something? <laughs> um, he, from what I've heard, he has a lot of anxiety issues. Oh wow, well, I shouldn't. So make fun he has. So he has not been on the road. Okay, I can't make fun of that. I mean, I can, but I'm just like, people are going to tweet me and be like, dude. Oh, no. I, I, after <laughs> seeing that Morrow documentary, yeah. I will never mock anyone yeah. with any kind of stuff like that ever again. Because... You should see, you should see me before Rise, like before the show. <laughs> like it's it's I'm a bottle of like nerves. I'm like I turn to I think every single person and go like yeah, no one's showing up and everyone's like no, there's gonna be fans. We have like I was, X reserves. They're gonna show up. I'm like no, they just bought. They just bought. I was worried when I saw a beer in your hand at Uprise. <laughs> And then, like, and then I saw you later, and you're like, I'm feeling better about the show. And I'm like, how many beers in are you? I know. <laughs> I, like, I know, like, people always joke of, like, well, I drink to feel better. And it's like, I definitely drink to feel better because, like, <laughs> these, I have, like, really, really bad anxiety before those shows. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'm waiting for, like, the, uh, like, oh, no one showed up, and it's all your fault, like, for that to happen. <laughs> so, like, I wouldn't go after Lars for that because, like, I get that anxiety. And, like, yeah. like Mar is the same way. Like, I get it. He has, like, a lot of anxiety and depression. And, like, that's not, you shouldn't joke about that. I mean, it's funny, but you shouldn't joke about it. Um, <laughs> that's for Jack Pollock. He's he's happy with those jokes. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, back to John Cena. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't know he was going to be in the Royal Rumble, and I felt like they should have done something with him, at least like a promo or yeah. something. Like it was you're like- there, like he's a big star, and people. A lot of people are like, a lot of people are using their free network subscription on that month. It would be smart to have him on the program to at least like, hey guys, I still wrestle. I'm just not on this particular show. Like, keep paying for the subscription type of thing. I think it just would have helped. Well, uh, uh, Missy, producer Missy is sharing with us this article from uh, 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 with Spandex on Uproxx of uh, a John Cena showing off his trimmed down new physique. If like, you guys haven't seen this, I yet. don't like. John I don't know. Cena. Is it worse because of the hair, or he's much more vascular now? Because he's trimmed down, you're just, you're just concerned about his veins, <laughs> man. I he's so like trimmed down now that I just he looks completely different. Like his face looks completely different. Now I get he's also older, and I'm like I still have young yeah. Cena in my brain, but like he looks I still have young Cena in my brain. Yeah, he looks like his face looks different. Mm-hmm. The hair doesn't help. Uh, he looks I'm more missed. dad than when he was in Blocked. Yeah, yeah. he looks yeah. like JBL. There's oh, a little bit of the JBL to it. Oh. I think that's the hair, though. Um, and this he is looks not the like physique, a, not a, the a physique. Wahlberg when believe... he does G- John Cena. Yeah, a little he, bit. He looks more like a disgraced senator. <laughs> what? Wow. All right. That, All right. That's um, well, uh, they're, they're from this, I believe this is the from this article. The senator from Massachusetts would like to... Sorry. Uh, from this article, <laughs> uh, a, a, a quote from Uprox, as Cena notes, he's working on a combination of martial arts... <laughs> And I'm assuming that emoji means yoga with weight training yeah. still involved, but as a much smaller portion of his workout regimen as usual. Is he still doing the stuff with Jackie Chan? Um, I they think, were making a I movie think, together. I think that's done. Is that's that done? Because I know that's why he trimmed out a lot, because he was working uh, well with Jackie Chan. Which is, a, like, by the way, that's the most, like, 2019 thing you can say in the world. Is like, John yeah. Cena's been working out with Jackie Chan, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry... Uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Marcus, uh, what do you think of his sixth move of Doom, the Lightning Fist? Uh, it's it's totally John Cena when you see it. 
Okay. Okay. You know, yeah, right. Okay. Here you go. You're like, that's a total John Cena. Now I like just the, making sure. I like the attitude adjustment. I think you should just stick with it. He doesn't. He didn't need to update it. Yeah. Hogan didn't need to update the leg drop. No. You know, no. just let him do the but move. But he also had a had a slim but down. But to be fair, I don't think wait, 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 that's wait, a different. Wait, wait, wait. Hogan <laughs> had a slim down look era, right? Mm-hmm. And the new beard look and yeah. and everything. So that, that was for a different. Reason. He had the yeah. era where he had like no facial hair. Yeah, so and yeah, he also had the era weird. where his sixth move of doom was whipping someone with what a weight is... belt. Oh, that weight oh. belt. Oh. Well, <clears throat> Cena... no, it's, he did in every match, whether he was heel or face or NWO Dude, or like you get red to, and yellow. Like, when hey, still let, let's use call it. When let's you call it what it is, WCW. It's a it's a yappa pie. <laughs> the yappa no, pie. No, no the yappa pie strap. Yappa pie. It wasn't a yappa pie no, strap. It was a weight. It was, it was a weight, weight belt. Thing, so like the thing with Hogan yappa is, is like uh, when you get to we'll call the the pants Hogan era. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> What's wrong with your legs, Hogan? Yeah. Pants Hogan era. And even like, cause there's pants Hogan era where every once in a while, like the trunks would come out still, but it was mostly pants, like yet red, straight red pants, like that end of WWF into WCW run. Uh, Hogan was a heel. Hogan wrestled like a heel. He did back scratches and eye rakes and hit you with his weight belt and all that type of stuff. Like, Watch his tag match on uh, from WrestleMania nine with him and Beefcake yeah, yeah. versus uh, Million Dollar Man and uh, IRS. You don't know who the heels are in that match. Like Jimmy Hart has like a referee shirt and makes the count. It's a <laughs> it's the weirdest psychology match you've ever seen in your life. Mm-hmm. And, you're like, and he all, and later that night he also steals oh, the from he, he yeah. steals the whole pay per view. Yeah, it's so dumb. So, so I hate, WrestleMania I hate nine, knowing that that match exists with, the, with the tag match. No, 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 the, no. The, the, the ending of WrestleMania nine, the Hogan Yokozuna match, which, which I mean, I've they make up for when they get, when you get back to every tag. time it's out on like Hollywood video or yeah. blockbuster. I had to rent it for some reason <laughs> just to make sure my mind wasn't playing tricks on me because well, you, I really wanted Bret Hart to win. But that damn Yokozuna, here's the thing. Fucked everything up, Here's and the then Hulk Hogan comes in and goes, "Hey, I'm going to be in this match now He's too. Gonna, and it's going to be a, a different roll. match." If, if, and then and then Finley Finley says it's still going. Okay. If you bookend it and watch the end of nine, and you watch the end of ten, the story is a very complete story. <sighs> they do have a complete story there. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just like going from WrestleMania four to five. Yeah, yeah. You got to watch for the story. Mm-hmm. Or WrestleMania six to eight. This is why I never complain whenever like anything on Raw happens, and people or on a pay per view, and people are like, "Oh." What is that? And I'm like, look, it's a, you got to let the story play yes. out. Where, where are they going with this? I tell Mike that all the time. Where are they going here? And yes. then usually the answer I usually is terrible. I know where they're going yeah. with it, though, and I don't like where they're going with it, so I can still <laughs> complain about it. Wow. Guys, Larry has crawled out from the Deep Dark Forge uh, studios in the basement here. I have. You're uh, with uh, us. Lady Larry sends her uh, regards. Hi, Lady Larry sends her yeah. regards. Say his name right. Along yes. with middle fingers for everyone. Middle fingers for everybody. They're very stone cold over. Yes. Um, so uh, we, we, you came in right in the middle of the John Cena segment. Yeah. yeah. Great timing. Great timing. And I know. And well, well, we talk heard. about his role in Bumblebee. <laughs> I didn't see Bumblebee. As I said on the pre-show, I'm not familiar with uh, Transformers lore, so I, I can't. I don't feel like I just jump right in. It was a good movie to get introduced to. Okay, it, it's like the, I saw that preview for like that Rock and uh, Jason Statham movie with like Idris Elba as the villain, and I'm like, oh man, uh, this Calvin all of these characters, are, no. like yeah, or, yeah, Calvin and Hobbs, Hobbs and something, <laughs> <laughs> Calvin and Hobbs. <laughs> uh, I'm like, oh man, like the Rock and Jason Statham and Idris Elba, like these are all actors I like, and it's an action movie. I'll be interested, and then they're like Fast and Furious presents. I'm like. Oh, dude, I'm not familiar with this lore in any sort of way. You don't need to be. It doesn't there's, matter. There's going to be little sure. winks that, and that nods. Series, right. it's, it's cars moving hey, very fast. Yeah. So people hey, driving no, it's, remember, it's not and, even that. Then Ludacris is going to show up in a tank, and I'm not going to know what's going on. That series evolved from drag racing, mm-hmm. illegal drag racing, to The Rock driving a tank down a road trying to stop a satellite from shooting a laser into the earth. Yes. So, so wait on a minute. So, ice. So on, on, ice. on ice. On ice. So, so nice. remember when we were talking about Mission Impossible lore earlier? Yes. Yeah, throw it, it even further out the window. It okay? Turned, it turned into G.I. Joe. It, it, was, it is more... That has The Rock is, in it. Fast and the Furious. The, late, G, the Rock was in G.I. Joe. Yeah, so say. The last like, three yeah. Fast and the Boy, Furious movies are a better G.I. Joe than G.I. Joe. Boy, when is uh, The Rock going to get in Mission Impossible? <laughs> Tell me he doesn't belong mm-hmm. in Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. Like, The Rock is the villain in Mission Impossible? You're in. Only because Tom Cruise would look so tiny. Oh my Tom God. Cruise doesn't want a sidekick bigger than him. Oh, we got a run in. We got a oh. run in for Matt Carlin's. I don't even have a camera for him. He's. What is he doing? What is he doing? What is happening? 
Did I miss the John Cena discussion? No. What are you feeling about oh, John Cena? God. What's going on? We're in the on? tail end of it. I'm talking right now about uh, how The Rock needs to be a Mission Impossible. <laughs> the Rock needs to be a Mission Impossible. Here's what I'll say. I think Tom Cruise will go for it because he had Henry Cavill in there and he looks small next to Henry that Cavill. That is true. That is true. And yeah. Henry Cavill was Camera awesome. tricks. Camera tricks. I will say this. Uh, that mustache in Mission Impossible totally made all those reshoots for uh, Justice League worth it. Yeah. I, hey, you know. At God. least go for the movie that was going to work. Release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> All right. Snyder Cut, leave the mustache in. Superman yes, with a mustache. Just let it happen. Give me the Zack Snyder Justice you know, League. We're changing everything else. Let's just have have. You know, they Superman. even could have kept it in by saying he was buried in the ground for so long. He grew Your facial mustache, hair. Yes. <laughs> just a mustache. Like, just a like, mustache. Because honestly, if you watch... If you watch or read anything where Doomsday has killed Superman, mm-hmm. he comes back with long hair. Long mm-hmm. hair and a beard, usually. Like, Why so not just transfer the hair from a mullet to a mustache? I don't know if it's a beard or if it's just a face warmer. Why? Well, I, well, I don't know why your mic is off. There, there it goes. What'd you say? It's like Tom Hanks from Castaway. Yes, exactly. I enjoy Castaway. Oh, it's guys. Larry, you're here. Robert you're just Zemeckis. in time. You're, you, we'll have to offer you I'll something. watch anything Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> the wrestling um, mayhem show when i'm on is the least amount of wrestling did, is, did you is. did you put my petition out there which since petition? i wasn't here for that the petition the petition oh no we forgot to put the petition out okay there. is podner on the podcast or on the chat i believe he is dave podner i will purchase you a patreon in the bank if you use your eliminator tonight on john cena Ooh. but but ah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, well, talk to the hey, hey, talk to the mic. Talk to the mic. If if he gets eliminated, Podner, you have a chance to be a hero tonight. <laughs> because I want to see if Marcus Mann can book a match without John Cena. Uh, I did last year. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I, I did. Think I think did. I did Lesnar and Batista. Oh. Did you? Wow. By the way, you can't do that. That's match right. Anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I love Podner, the offer is off the table. Because here's the thing: what people don't know about me, I <laughs> love Dave Batista. Dave Batista. Here, oh, here's, here we go. This, gonna, is a, this is a new thread. I'm going to circle this back real quick. Uh, someone posted it. I think Lance Storm retweeted it that uh, Dean Ambrose right now on Raw for the next couple months is going to be like like tail end Batista when he did oh, not care. Oh, dude, it's already benefiting. His stuff last night, yeah. I, I thought was like the best Dean the Ambrose stuff with EC3. We've seen with EC3. Yeah. yeah. Was like, oh no, this is the Dean Ambrose I like. Where have you been? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that end era Batista, where he just went straight Kanye West with like the pink polo <laughs> and just didn't care anymore, <laughs> is like the best wrestling ever. Uh, I don't, I dare you to find a better, like, I'm leaving wrestling moment. Then Dave Batista in the wheelchair screaming, I quit. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's um, brilliant. I, I will counter offer Mark Henry, Salmon Jacket. But he didn't retire. He didn't retire. He did not quit then. It's still a I'm quit. leaving wrestling moment. Eric Bischoff. But he did not leave wrestling. Or, uh, gar- uh, like Dave Batista. Batista. Man. I came. I mean, he left for a while. But he left. <laughs> he <laughs> left for Where a couple years. We're on the. No <laughs> one really leaves. Well, Brock, but also, Bro- Brock Lesnar, uh, Goldberg. Yeah, the mo- yeah the- I was there live for that. It was, it was awful. <laughs> oh. uh, also, if you look back, one of my also yeah, favorite- so was I. That was not a good moment. The uh, the Dave Batista, the last time he left, whenever they were doing like the Evolution versus Shield stuff, and Hunter was like, "Like we got to face him again." And Batista's like, "Where's my title shot?" And he's like, "Well, no, we're gonna face the Shield." And Batista just threw the mic down and just princess waved and left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the princess wave! Here I am, go <laughs> off the Guardians of Galaxy Three. See you, and there it's just go. like perfect, Batista. Like he's amazing. I love. I like. I I love Batista so much. He is so good when he's a heel. He's amazing as a babyface. He's just kind of like eh. He's got nothing going for him as a babyface, but as a heel, he's amazing. I'm sorry, I'm not on. Oh, I am. Um, I went down a uh, summer of 2006 SmackDown rabbit hole in the WWE network, mm-hmm. and it's like oh, he, God. babyface Batista oh, it's tough. with King Booker and everything. Like yeah, Finley's yeah. getting his push, and like, I, like the level of overness that Batista has is just oh, beyond belief. Like, you know, it's, it's crazy. Incredible. You go like uh, 06. If you were at like a SmackDown, I remember I was at a. I think it was a. I think it was a SmackDown. Um, 
Batista's music hit, and the pop was like Austin level pop. Yeah. I mean, it was gigantic. Yeah. And you don't think of Batista being like good or over for some reason, but he was. He was a like the stuff with him and Taker too, like those feuds. He was over the, as fuck even with the ta- with that, Taker. That's where that was going. Yeah. Too. That's what it was leading up to was Batista versus Undertaker. He is. So. He was even so before over. that when he was on Raw. And he was holding that contract for SmackDown, and he just yeah. put his thumb down. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that oh, pop was massive. Yes, he was. And you got you got to give uh, like Hunter pop. was so over as a heel then too because he built Orton and Batista as like monster baby faces out of that. But no one thought Batista. I remember there was a like right before the Rumble, Batista wrestled La Resistance. Yeah, we're going there. And, wow. And, wait, 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 wait. Did they have Fifi? <clears throat> no, this was pre-Fifi. Pre-Fifi. It was just... Pre-Fifi. Um, Pre-fi. Uh, I don't know if Conway was there yet. So it was oh, it was Dupree. It was oh, probably man. still Grenier. It yeah, was Grenier yeah. and Dupree. And they were tag yeah. team champions. And Batista beat both of them in a handicap match. The tag team champions mm-hmm. pinned them on top of each other, took the flag, and stuck it up the guy's butt. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you just go like... And the crowd went insane. And you're like, oh my God, this guy's over. Like, I haven't seen anything like this since Austin, how over he is. <laughs> and like, the pops were insane. Like, the buildings would shake for him. Oh, yeah. Like, like Batista comes back from the injury, and you're like, you forget about like how he got to getting the world title back eventually from King Booker, but he gets screwed like three or four times yeah. in like title matches. To the point where, like, it, if you're watching it like today, you're like, your smarkish mind would be like, they're they're gonna they're killing Batista. They're killing Batista, but they're not. He not just at all. Came, every time he comes out, well, he's like, he is gonna murder Booker. He's gonna murder Finley. He's gonna murder Regal. He's gonna and murder. That's the thing, and that's what people want. Yeah. They eventually paid it off. Yeah, they did. They, they did. don't they do did. that now. Now the, he well, got great, Kali. Yeah. Oh my god. They, there was a lot of buying in on the audience's part there because they they were oh, yeah. they were they and were that, on for the ride. And the problem is, is like, and this is like in. I'm not a like I'm not a WWE hater usually. I usually let them play their storylines out and everything. And I I do think they're going to play this out eventually. But like I think that's the big mistake now of like when I watched Royal Rumble and I watched Finn versus Brock, the first thing after that match, which I love that match. <clears throat> that's one of the best matches I've seen in a while. Yeah. I love that match. As soon as that match is over, I was on Twitter and being like, I I want the rematch now. Mm-hmm. And it was such like a Wow, we need something to fill in here because of Braun and all this type of stuff. We'll just use Finn here in this spot. Yeah. And like the mistake was, it was so good that you're like, I want to see, I want Finn to be the guy that beats Brock. Like, I want Beast versus Demon. Like, you got to give mm-hmm. it to me now. Yep. I yeah. I want that in Mania. And it was kind of mm-hmm. like, I don't think anyone expected that match to be that fantastic, but it was easily, I think it was the best, like, easily the best match on the I card. I don't think anyone in charge expected that match to be fantastic. Yes. I think all of us expected it to be great. I don't know how anyone couldn't have seen that coming, that that was going to be an awesome match. After, like, like Brock's new template, like, where it used the old, like, Brock temp, the Suplex City mm-hmm. match template that Brock was running for a while. He's traded that in for Brock versus a guy a third of his size template. So now he has, like, Styles, <laughs> Brian. Yeah. Finn, and now he yeah, has and, like balls out matches with the those guys. So yeah, the whole story of that match, like I'd never seen anyone take the corner of a table like that. Like I'd never seen that spot happen. And so when it happened, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. And then the way and it, it makes so much sense too, because yeah. Finn's finisher is the coup de gras. It's a stomp to the gut. The psychology of it was so good. And then he hits that finish and brought kicks and then right into the Kimura. And you're like, he's a shooter. He would do that. Like that's, mm-hmm. it's so well paced. And I, I've talked about it on this show before and everywhere I go. The best storyline I have seen, and this has come from a guy who, who never liked the guy when he was in WCW, in years has, was the Brock Goldberg story. Because it was the first time as a, as a smarky or insider business type of guy that you go like, I don't know when this match is going to end. Like, yeah. when you get to that Mania match with Goldberg and Brock, you're like, this match could be 15 seconds. Or it could be 15 minutes. We don't know. And so you're on the edge of your seat. And then they did the exact same thing with Finn. Where like you're like when Finn gets rolling, you're like, oh man, he might beat him here. Like that little doubt steeps in. Mm-hmm. And then he gets him in the Kimura and you go like, okay, Finn will get out of this. And then we'll come back. And then now he just taps. And you're like, you're shocked. Mm-hmm. It's It was so well put together. And at the end of it, like every Brock match now feels like an adrenaline rush. Mm-hmm. Now I wouldn't have done all the end stuff if I was booking, if I'm in charge. I wouldn't have done like him beat up Finn after. It just so, doesn't need it. It wasn't needed. But, uh, like, Ed, Ed, Nothing Ed, was gained. Edge and Christian were talking about saying that was that was a he's so pissed that 
it wasn't that it, he did almost get him, and that's why he beat him up. I get, I get so the reasoning, thing, but it doesn't nothing help was, Finn. Not, yeah, it doesn't help Finn. Mm-hmm. It doesn't help Brock. Like, it how does, does that help? help? I mean, it, it, it would have helped Bro- Finn helped so Brock much like more if he would have just. As, as being vulnerable and being scared that he was vulnerable. But unless you're doing a rematch with Finn, yeah. It yeah. doesn't help Finn. It's just someone getting beat down after a match. Yeah. And Brock, I think, could sell the vulnerability better with a facial expression. I think, like, Brock getting out of there and rolling outside and Heyman panicked, handing me the title and, like, go, run. Yeah, now, let's get, get out, out of here. here. Sells that panic and frustration more than him delivering a bunch of F5s and stuff like yeah. that. It yeah. just, I, w- I don't think that was needed. I don't think anyone gets over with that. Well, we had a lot of. Uh... Opinions about how WWE's booking, and let's see if we can do it better here after the break. But in the meantime, I want to shout out to our friends Slice on Broadway right here in Pittsburgh. Support Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. If you're in town, please go check them out. They're over in, right here up the road in Beachview. Uh, so if you want to check out the studio and do that as well, as well as in Carnegie, PA, on the way to the airport, East End, and PNC Park, home of the, P- the Pittsburgh Pirates. Go check them out. Hit them up at PJH underscore slice. And like we said, help the global expansion. Hit them up on the uh, social media accounts. Give them a picture of your Broadway in your town and let them know you want to slice on your Broadway. Uh, also, if you haven't checked out, there was a video last week of uh, <laughs> of the Beast Man. I uh, went over there with his uh, uh, new Fight Society championship and uh, got some pictures with the guys and uh, visiting his friends over at Slice on Broadway. Check out our friends SliceOnBroadway.com and let them know the Mayhem Show sent you. We'll be back after this message with Mayhem Mania. Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is time for Mayhem Mania. We got the crew here. Of course, Marcus Mann still with us. Sadly. Sadly. <laughs> I saw this card. <laughs> oh, no. You, he's judging the Mayhem Mania card. Well, oh. this is your opportunity to help make it better. I, like, yeah, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. This is like, uh, I made a joke, like, um, sometimes there's certain cards that are like, uh, you get you get an individual who's like uh, been shot like twice, and you know what to do, how to fix those wounds. And then you have like this one, which is like Peter Weller from RoboCop. <laughs> what the <laughs> What? So, so, so you're you don't know where to start to fix this. No, you just turn him into a robot. <laughs> we turn him into damn RoboCop. There Larry is here. Matt Carlin oh, is man. here. Can of I course. put RoboCop with Sting? Sorry. Go, well, hey. Well, I, you know, it, that Future. might not be against the rules. St- Sting, Sting is out of commission. Marcus, he, he I dare you to book RoboCop versus Bart Gunn. I dare you. <laughs> or Butterbean. Can I make it? Or can I make it brawl for all rules? I try. That comes later. <laughs> As a, you got to contribute to Patreon. To he do has that. not been banned yet. No, he is not. But also Robo with Cop? us, we got oh, on the line, no, of course, God. still with us is the Riz. Oh, he's muted, I think. He's muted. I've been muted this entire time. You have been. You have been <laughs> trying to talk to us, I'm sure. Also, I've been trying to talk to everybody. Still with like, us is Mad Mike. Mad Mike's still with me. us. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. And we got it. We got a we got a menagerie of people and species joining us. First of all, Dave <laughs> Potter of the Chinese Shutter Podcast is with us. Hey guys, and I have options. options. You have options. I have options here, so I am Dave, ready for almost anything. Is that Dave, on the back of a to bank tear envelope? That paper up in a fit of rage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> be prepared. You props. Trust also, can we turn paper for this? It doesn't help. <laughs> also with us first time on the show long time chat rumor brandon with us what's up what's up and, and representing the kc i see Ugh, awesome and also Ugh. with us um straight out of the duck coop um if you're on video you just see a bunch of ducks eating uh ty cross is with us for some reason what's um, up from i wanted to do mayhem mania again and i also had to take care of my ducks for the night so I just put one and one together, and now you guys are all seeing my ducks. All <laughs> right. Who yeah, booked this shit? Straight from the Thai right. Double Cross Ranch. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't know. That's the first. We've never had <laughs> that much foul on this show. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> this is this is not my segment. The show has run afoul. This is Matt Carlin's. <laughs> Matt Carlin's. Hey. It's Mayhem Mania. Ty, no outside help with your picks. You're not allowed to consult your friends. No gobbledygookers. <laughs> no ducks. No cookers. All right. Yes, this is Mayhem Mania. Um, it's kind of a competitive thought experiment where we're trying, Marcus, to create the best WrestleMania 
humanly possible within the confines of the current reality in which we all live and consume our professional wrestling. Um, basically, think of yourself as Vince McMahon with unlimited resources and zero self-control. So Vince McMahon. Exactly. Good job. Have you been watching? No. I'm oh, not, wow! I'm, not, I'm really not familiar with the Mayhem Mania lore. Yeah, well, <laughs> there is one, and you, you jumped right in. You're, you're fitting right in. Um, so basically, we have eight matches here on our card. And tonight we're going to bring in five people, and each one of these five people are going to make one change to the card that you see here. Either you can, you know, if you don't like a match, Marcus, you can just take a match out entirely and just bring in a new match with entirely new people. You can, like, swap one for one between there. If you want to, like, you know, move Sanity up there and make Cena versus Gallus and EC3 versus Sandy, you can do that. You can um, just, you know, add one person. You could turn a one-on-one -on -one match into a three-way or a four-way into a five-way in multiple ways you know let your imagination run wild use your big promoter brain and make <laughs> can something I, can I make magical a, can i make a suggestion not no. to the card not yet but to the game to the game yeah something well, you can I mean, add we, you we've had a sure. pretty, no, 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 pretty well established and, and lengthy it. list of rules no no I'm for, so, here's what i'm saying okay go ahead this is all i'm gonna say all right i love what you got going on here yeah uh, I love that it's an eight-match card for WrestleMania. Right. That's the perfect amount of matches. Yeah. But as we know over the years, WrestleMania has really expanded with the, like, three-hour pre-show. Yeah. Would you guys ever consider adding, like, a Patreon or subscription to get a pre-show match on? I'm glad you mentioned that, Marcus. Um, if a match can survive on our eight-match card mm -hmm. for three weeks okay. without being altered in any way, we'll basically move it over onto, like, a super card where it's oh. locked in and protected and kept free from harm, and then it opens another slot to bring in to, uh, you know, okay. open up another slot and create another match. So basically, we're trying to get eight matches onto the super card, gotcha. and then whatever happens down so here it becomes kind the... of the undercard slash okay. pre-show. So, so yeah, so nothing has made the super card yet. Nothing has made the super card yet. So how long? How many weeks have we been doing this? We've only into week three. Okay. So is, what's uh, what is uh, what is our matches that are almost there? Oh, I like to keep that a secret. Ooh. Until we, uh, those who play. And follow on a follow weekly the basis. Lore. Follow the lore. Probably. Those who follow the lore. <laughs> those who are deeply ingrained into the Mayhem Mania universe and follow every mm -hmm. duck and turn and are looking for the Easter eggs every week, you know. Okay. They know where this is going. Gotcha. You know, there's a game being played here, Marcus. Okay. Um, some are playing the game. Some are just fumbling around and making matches. Quick, anyway. <laughs> quick side point. The game, great film with Michael Douglas. Go see it. Sean Penn's in it. Michael Douglas, uh, David Fincher. It's pretty Fight Club Fincher. You're gonna love it. Watch the game. That's my. That's my. Pick I agree. Of, that's my. Pick no, of, I've never seen it. Week. Really? Fun. No. Oh, yeah, it's sorry. fantastic. Pick yeah. of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Highest recommendation. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we're gonna go through the matches here, Sorg, and then uh, don't let me forget to mention the Eliminators. And then uh, that's gonna mark us. You're you're gonna have trouble with that anyway let's go through our four <laughs> matches we have right now and then it'll give our five players a chance to kind of think about what they're gonna do here we go uh first off this uh four-way match created by jen my wife braun Strowman versus tyler Bate versus cesaro versus dean ambrose that's right dean's farewell match sorgatron created elias versus the velveteen dream mad mike created ec3 versus john cena marcus larry created becky lynch versus rhea ripley Alex Cars created Mustafa Ali versus the free agent DJZ, who, of course, Vince McMahon will give a ton of money to, to uh, come and do Mania. Uh, Missy, producer Missy, created Trish Stratus versus Alexa Bliss. Beast Man, uh, you may be familiar with him. He created Vaguely. Drew McIntyre versus Lars Sullivan versus Samoa Joe. <laughs> and Tina created Sanity versus Gallus. Marcus. Yes. Can you name, sorry to put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. I always wanted to do this. Okay. Can you name all three members of Gallus? No. Can you name one member of Gallus? No. Great. Um, I've, never, you, I've never heard of Gallus. Didn't you say that you're <laughs> watching NXT UK? I watched some. I'm like way behind. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're not at Gallus yet. Okay. No. Gallus no, is like way behind. Here am I. Yeah, Gallus oh, is, is, is this from the coffees? Yes, yeah, okay. there you go. That's yeah. Mark and Joe right. Coffee and Wolfgang. Okay, so, I'm yeah. at the very, very beginning of the like the coffees. You yeah, okay. You do. All right. So I, I yeah, once you, okay, I know. Hey, yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> you didn't have to give me one. I eventually guess. I, I, if I spot you a coffee, can you name the rest? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Anyways. Uh, like, uh, I wanted to mention, all right, we have these things, Marcus, called eliminators. Sure. Uh, sometimes people get carried away and their imaginations run too wild. So Kind of well, like we, the eliminators. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> we try to, so we come up with these, with, with, uh, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, hey, they, were, they were great pros. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny? Okay. <laughs> um, so th- this is kind of a tool to kind of, put a limit on kind of people getting carried away with certain yeah so like, so, like, like you know, say so I, basically i will we will award eliminators people can take their eliminator they can hold on to it or they okay. can use it whenever they want to use it and basically they use their eliminator they can eliminate one person from mayhem mania entirely for the entire year so they cannot be booked into any matches because we don't want to see them either for personal safety or for you know just good taste you know whatever oh man i really want to do a bad taste match that's going to ruin everything well let me tell you the four people who've been eliminated so far marcus all right so let's see, see how let's, this goes let's cross my fingers make sure none of the people i really want to put on the card have been eliminated and, and i'm going to attach names to this because i want you to be able to direct your rage at someone other than me um right. i eliminated rick flair fair enough uh mad mike eliminated jeff jarrett good call uh brandon eliminated drake maverick and why. Dave Podner eliminated Brock Lesnar. Ooh, that was dumb. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now geez. there's there's a few more there's a few eliminators still floating out All there. All right, my guys are still out there. Still got Kiss Demon and RoboCop. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, Brandon st- Brandon still has an eliminator. Bobby F J Town still has one, and Dave Podner still has an eliminator. Uh, they earned those eliminators when they did the Royal Rumble Challenge a couple weeks back. No one told me about that. Well, and you know what? You we're going to do show. we're going to do an elimination chamber challenge, right. Marcus, and I will uh, I will fill you in and I'll let you know how that's going to work. But first, let's don't get I get done. one for actually being a booker? <laughs> you want me to just gift you one? What? I gift you, you, I gift you the magic of rise to, once a month. Like, <laughs> you have to earn it in combat. You have like, to can't just give it to give you. him Vince McMahon's magic eraser. Yeah, man. <laughs> she give it. Oh. All right. Yeah. No All Brock right. Lesnar. Do we got a reason on that? Uh, is Dave? He, uh, yeah. Dave? Yeah. Is, Dave? He, is he too good? Is that the problem? Dave, Dave did you eliminate Do- Brock Lesnar because he's too good? I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the reason that because Brock won't show up on TV, he shouldn't show up in Mayhem Mania. Yeah, Dave, what was the reason? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much it. Just a matter of, you know, I, why have him on Mayhem? Why? Yep. See, Brock. Well, Stand well said. Paul, Paul Heyman not is say just... anything, bounce around for three seconds, and then leave. And then leave. Oh. All right. Brock Lesnar <laughs> deserves better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so, real, real quick here. Yeah, all right. All right. I, I gotta, I gotta put my foot down here for a second. Uh, this Kenny Omega thing is kind of, it's like a cloud hanging over Mayhem Mania. I mean, he's kind of out there, but like AEW is doing a news conference on like Thursday. That doesn't matter. But so I, myself, me, your gentle host, and the, uh, and of course the God of Mayhem Mania, I, I decree that for one week only. Kenny Omega's name will not oh. be spoken. So what? if it's still up in the air next week, go at it, you crazy so, sons so of bitches. Saying... But for this week only, I'm telling you that the dust is not settled. I will not have Kenny Omega put onto this so, card so, yet. So here's my question. It, anyone under contract for AEW, you're suggesting, could not be on a That's right. mania show. You're everyone considering them come, everyone... contracts... Those Exclusive, legitimate, yeah, yeah. They have legitimate contracts. Everyone comes in their current... <laughs> Physical, emotional, contractual state. So if someone, so if like, well, if that's the case, wouldn't we have to? Hiroshi take... Tanahashi's under contract for New Japan. Yeah, okay. It doesn't that's matter how much money Vince McMahon tries to spend; he's not bringing him over to work WrestleMania. What about like some of? The, what about like the gentlemen and ladies from like Impact? Oh. Since they're not under like an exclusive deal, they would be considered a- available. We'll say. Make your case. Okay, but here's another question: What about like? Uh, certain ring of honor superstars like i'm not saying that i would use any of these but i just want to establish some rules i would say that if they're working regularly in ring of honor it's pretty clear that they're not gonna so there's a difference between a like a ring of honor guy. there's a difference between like a like, marty like, scroll who's under a actual ring of honor contract right and mm-hmm. a guy who like like shane taylor who's not like i think he just signed the <laughs> contract he's got an exclusive now, he just yeah. signed an exclusive. Yeah. all right so then like what is Flip Gordon under exclusive contract? 
But like those type of guys that are just like yeah. in and out. I, of I get what you're, I get what you're driving at, and yes, you would keep them off. As there well. is a there is a there is an area of flexibility that you can operate in. Okay, that yeah. was more my question. Yeah. If there's a not that I would use it. Oh no, I know where you're going. No, you have no Batista idea. versus Flip Gordon. <laughs> now Flip's hurt, so I don't want to do that to him. Don't be okay we by can't. Mania. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know, know what honor I would use. Boy, what about is... like a Chris Daniels because he's taking indie bookings. He's he's AEW. I feel like he's booked. Uh, he's pretty signed to AEW. I would yeah, I no, would say is. no. On I don't one. think AEW's he... contract should be considered exclusive contract. What about what about like Chris Jericho? Uh, yeah, I'd pretty much say that's what it's... Jericho the... could show up at Mania. There's a video of him signing his contract. Yeah, but he could show up at Mania. I don't know if he's showing up at Mania. He, I'm not saying he's going to, but I'm saying he, he could show up at Mania. He might buy a ticket. Uh, anyway, I don't think AEW we contracts saying. are exclusive. I I might I'll I'll ask my lawyer. All right, you get to work on that. Let's get down to business. I think he's in the chat room. Marcus? Or, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Brandon? Brandon, up first. Great. Brandon, you're up first. Can someone put a What's champion up? on this card? <laughs> hey. WWE has 13 yeah, no way, titles. Let the man operate. 13 titles. You have zero of those champions. I think that says Not more NXT, about the would... champions than it does about our book. I mean, our card's perfect. You don't even have Oscar on there. I, I didn't do this, Marcus. Look, it's everyone is... You made a match. I, I did make a match. It was a hell of a match, and it's not there anymore. <laughs> I made uh, Braun Strowman versus Tyler Bate versus Cesaro, and then my wife came, and she uh, she made it better because she's my wife. She's... I, I put a champion on there, and it got taken off. See, so people are trying. Who'd you put on, Ty? Pete Dunn. See, yeah, that's <laughs> Pete Dunn's a champion. That was yeah, yeah, we had him. We had him. We just don't this week. It's a, it's so a li- I it's, get it. They let's check back later, Marcus. Me. Listen, Marcus, this is a living document. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a strict Scalia constitute. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. 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 I'm, not, I'm not. Well, happy I'm not. State of the Union to you, too. Anyway, I skipped the I, skip the st- I did skip the State of the Union for this, and I was very depressed. That's right. That's right. Our, 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 our guest on Awesome Cast actually called off for the State of the Union. I, so. Dude, I'm a, I'm a politics junkie. <laughs> he, he also works in the news business. Remember yeah. last time I was here, it was like the election night, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. It was, like a, was it primary night or election? Or it was local elections, I think, or something. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, the municipal elections. Yeah. Doesn't get much hotter than that. Hardcore. hardcore. 123 to 124. We got a new mayor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Uh, quiet on the quiet on the deck. Uh, right. Brandon, you're up. Brandon, Ty, you're on deck. Brandon, you have the floor. Um, I want to change Missy's match. Say again. You, you want to change Missy's match? That's Trish and Alexa, right? All right. Yeah. A uh, hot mess. Let's admit you lost. I got you. Hot, Chelsea Green. Hot mess versus who? Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross. Got it. Chelsea Green versus Nikki Cross. I can do All that. All right. Awesome. Ooh. And bye. I like it. Thank you, Brandon. That's a good move. That's a good match. All right. And he's on the board. He's changing the board. Tie her up. Ty. Oh, we'll, we'll get that rating. How you doing, Ty? How you feeling about your pick here tonight? I know you had a lot of questions when I spoke to you the other day. Yeah, I have to. I have to clarify some things because this is going to really uh, mess with my with my choice here. So if I blow up a match, can I use one of the members of that match. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. That's, oh. Nope. If you blow out an entire match, you got to bring in all new guys. Now you can swap one out and swap one in. And it's only a one for one. I can't make a triple threat into a singles match, but also introduce someone new. Ooh, that sounds like two steps. No, I don't think I can. Yeah, let it you sounds do that. two steps. That's two steps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is my hype man. <laughs> He's he repeating everything. The Leo Rush of Mayhem <laughs> Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Riz. <laughs> Finally, there's someone here who understands. Um, I was told not to do the thing that we were doing, and then somebody else did that same thing. See, Riz so, has been here for yeah, a long time, so, so Riz has, has a long memory. And Riz, so uh, Riz can remember every time he's been screwed over yeah. in this game. <laughs> so he is not going to let anybody get away with it. <laughs> Boy, I really wish I had an eliminator right now. Oh, oh yeah. No okay, so I'll tell you what I want to do, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> what okay. I want to do. Let me tell you what I want to do. <laughs> let me show you. All right, let the man work. I want to take out Drew McIntyre, and I want to take out Lars Sullivan, and I want to put one wrestler in. That Ooh. can't happen. Right? Can't do it. Two for one, no. Okay. Then I'll take take Lars Sullivan. Do I want to do Lars Sullivan or Drew McIntyre? You know what? I'll take out Lars Sullivan, and I'm going to put in the Austrian anomaly, Walter. Who? Walter. 
Walter and Drew McIntyre versus Samoa Joe versus Walter. Oh Jesus, <laughs> that's what I get for being last now. <laughs> Yeah, I want to do just Joe and Walter one on one, but that can't happen. So you're getting Drew versus Walter versus Joe. Yeah, really? you know what, uh, okay. Ty, I might, right. I might have an I answer like for you on that. Yeah. I think I might have just a thing to help you get through that situation, and I'll talk about it on Talking Mayhem Mania. <laughs> On uh, can't wait for it. the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube channel, so make sure you don't miss that time. All right, uh, Dave Podner's up. Riz is on deck. Yeah. Okay, so this is why I had three selections because two of mine just got blown up. See. <laughs> In fact, I had you can't read it here. Drew, Lars, Joe, scratched out Lars and put in Walter. Hey, 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 get that, get that ad for Dollar Bank out of your shot. Get that, we're not a sponsor. I didn't, I didn't say I, w- I had anything good nearby to write on. I was just grabbing stuff. But I do have a third one. So Thank God. the very first match. So I'm going to make an, an adjustment to the Carlin's match. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I'm we'll keeping Dean step. in. Yeah. So Jen will be happy. I'm keeping Dean in. <laughs> You're living right. You're anger, living Jen. right. Go. <laughs> No, no, I know better than anger wife. No. <laughs> so I am taking Braun out because I'm looking at the other guys and I want someone else who's as flexible and movable and I'm putting Ricochet in. Ooh. All right. Oh. Nice, hmm. nice, nice. I, I'd argue Ricochet is much more flexible hmm. than Dean, but okay. Well, true, <laughs> true. Uh, by the way, by the way, uh, I just want to take this note while you're writing that, uh, Matt. Uh, Bobby off J Town is calling out that you spelled Walter wrong, and Kyle, uh, Kyle, Kyle points out that it's because Walter takes no L's. Yeah, so it's water. <laughs> it's true. It's water. It says oh, it's water. Okay. So it's just water. That's the accent. I thought it was supposed to be all caps. Listen, I thought that's we can't right. understand what I, what we can't understand what two people in that match say with their accents. Anyways, just go with it. Honestly, Joke and talking up for all water of them. in there. Yeah, um, Antonio Garza. <laughs> May pull a um a uh, Wonder Twins on us and just put a bucket of water in the graphic. Yeah, he'll put true. like Hydro Man in there. You don't want <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. Though, imagine the imagine the build up of Joe cutting this awesome crazy <laughs> hardcore promo on Walter and him not saying anything and just booting him in the face. Oh. <laughs> it, it should the be a bucket of water that. with a with a giant hand that chops people. All right, and it's, and it's, uh, and it's also the <laughs> ultimate interpromotional match because it's three different promotions. Being represented, Raw, SmackDown, UK. Boom. No, Bobby. Bobby says it's misspelled because it's not all caps. Uh, I'll, I'll get to yeah. work on that. Uh, it's also true. Oh, my graphics yes. people will get on yeah. that. Uh, Riz, yes, my my dear friend Riz, mm. and Marcus, you're on deck. All right, I'm gonna have a big question when we get to me. All right, I'm sorry. So, we don't do the big question segment during Mayhem Mania season. I have. I, I can't. Are you up on I the have war, Marcus? Two in my head right now. <laughs> You have two in your head, okay? I have two in my head. You can only use one. Uh, it, Ty, how much do you love me? <laughs> Don't blow my match up, please. <laughs> no, do it. Wait, do wait, it. Wait, wait. Do it. Wait. You're not listening to me. How much do you want this? I, I don't know what you're. What I? What are you asking me? About? <laughs> because, this seems like a different podcast. All of a because time. that's actually, Thursday. I am. Yeah, that should be on current. Out, I, I really want to take out Drew McIntyre in this match. It's Drew Galloway. Just oh, to make well, your yeah, match. That's, that's fine. Just to make your match happen. Um, you said plus you get to come back again. So much less than that Mike dude does. Yeah. 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 yeah, you do whatever you want, buddy. Okay. Especially right. if it helps my match. There's out. two plus, mics plus. on this show. Yeah, the the dumb one. Oh. Whoa! Oh. 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 Shots over my oh. master's in chemical engineering. Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Ty <laughs> just dropped an egg on it. Ty has ducks. He's hey. smart. Hey. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Take out that <laughs> Damn it, Bad Mike needs to come to a rise show now. <laughs> the challenge tie cross to anything. I, I was about, I was about uh, to yeah. drop a mic. Wait, 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 like, wait, wait. No, 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 no. no. Wait, what, so what's the move, Riz? I got Riz? one zinger. I got to sit through all this who's tie cross garbage all the time. I got <laughs> one zinger. And he still don't know. Tie, here's the best thing about this. 
Next week, you're on the show again. Oh, we got the Alex Cars. Is is the move to is is Mm -hmm. the move to just straight up remove Drew McIntyre? Because exactly, what was it? I I don't think I can let you do that, Riz. (gasps) What? Wait, 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 wait. The the subtract move isn't on the table right now. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) What? You see the subtract move? Batard. Both of y'all. The subtract move (laughs) is not on the table right now. I'm sorry. So subtraction is not on the table. Subtraction's not an option right now. Okay, then. That's all right. We'll, we'll build to it. We'll, we'll build something up then. Then, I, all right, I'm not going to do that match. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Ty. Use your other what idea. What I'm going to do is Mad Mike's match. No, no. <laughs> yes. Take out Don Cena. What? Wow. Oh. Yes. oh wow. Yes. Hashtag take, take out John Cena. Man. Dave, now's Put your chance. In. Triple H. H. Oh. Triple H. What? Oh, oh. EC3 versus three H's? Oh, my God. That's, that's actually good. That's actually good. You make match. things worse. No, that's, that's actually not. Everyone has a build to it. That's good. That would no. be a good match. match actually. That'd be good. This uh, is a good match to it. TNA's son in law or son or whatever he is. Yeah, it's just the TNA, <laughs> it's the WWE TNA son in law versus nothing. the WWE. That E and C don't WWE. stand for anything. <laughs> they could be Elimination Chamber. <laughs> He's well, Eric Cartman the third. <clears throat> yeah. Well, <laughs> that's Golga. Riz, thanks a lot. Sorry, sorry to pull that uh, swerve on you there, but the rules are the rules. We have rules, Sorg. We do. A lot of rules. I, lots of rules. That's true. I forgot. I forgot that wasn't a rule. That's okay. Until later on, if when rules, it's actually rules, a rule. Your, your knowledge of the lore worked against you on that. Even one. though there's no rules, <laughs> and just saying that's not a rule, that's also a rule. <laughs> I, I, I have never I done that to you, Riz. Have I? <laughs> Marcus? All right. Here's I mean, my, here's you've my got question. this down, right? This all makes sense, I got right? two matches. One, if I'm allowed to do it, I'm going to do it. And one that is my backup in case I'm not allowed to I'm do it. I'm having a lot of reservations about RoboCop. No. Robo- <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how bad I want RoboCop I know versus how, Cena Oh, right I now. think I do know how bad you want RoboCop versus Cena. <laughs> a RoboCop versus Cena versus Kiss Demon three-way. Um, but here's my question. Okay, so I know I have unlimited resources, and I, but I, Ponder, you can and I, I'm, I'm, right but am now. I limited to Vince McMahon's uh, uh, <laughs> Vince McMahon's sensibilities? No, no, no. You can be as insane as you want to be. So, like, my question is, you're not you're trying to predict what Vince is going to do. You're trying okay. to do better than. No, no. What I'm saying is, because I know WWE has a certain some certain rules in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Am yeah. I allowed to do an intergender yep. match? Yep. All right. Since I'm allowed to do an intergender match. Wait, 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 wait a second. Where's the where's the rule book? Where's the rule book? It's in here. It's, it's in here. In, no, it's in your head. But in my we head. have the rule book, and there's nothing about it. We, there, we made we there's made nothing about there not being intergender matches. That's right. We made Brock versus Oscar last year. Okay, that is true. We did, <laughs> and I wanted it, yeah. and we didn't get it. All right, All right. go so, on, Marcus. I am. I'm gonna blow up a match here. Uh oh. I think I'm gonna blow up this sanity match. Okay. Oh. All right. Is this because you couldn't name the Gallus? Nah, because it's just like, meh. Okay. Six Michael, man? What did the match got eliminated last week? Who's that? Mine. Yeah. No, yours is still there, Larry. That wasn't mine from last week. Oh, wait, she eliminated mine from week one. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've been robbed. Be very happy she's on the West Coast. Be very happy she's on the West right Coast. There on the bottom. <laughs> I'm, bo- I'm, d- I'm taking the bottom out. All right. All right Mark. And I would like to do uh, Seth Rollins versus Charlotte. Uh, neither of them Whoa, are what? champions. All right. What? Wow. What? That's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> That's good stuff. Oh. I Charge hard? John Cena for you. Oh boy. I I want to see oh, Seth Rollins and Charlotte on a silver go. Platter. Oh, oh, you guys boy, can eliminate John Cena. That's fine. If, and you can say three hour raw. Here's the thing. If you guys would like, if you guys would like to eliminate John Cena and have a terrible card. That no one wants to see. No. That's fine. Oh, John wow. Cena is John money. Cena all right. Match. If you guys don't want to draw, Cena was in a match. <laughs> I know, and that's that's a shame that he's not. Uh, the other match I was going to do, and this him. is on the table. He was available. I know he was available. Was available. I want to see. This is the match yeah. I want to see. What's reminding you that John Cena is still out there? <laughs> this is the match yeah. I want to see. Uh, the other match I would put on the table. My backup was going to be uh, Batista and Daniel Bryan. I like that one too. So that's on the table that you guys can use at a later date. I want to, I want to point out that Missy has been dropping me every article she can find about AEW contracts. Oh, good. <laughs> Great. They're not, they're not exclusive, and I think they're not exclusive. No, but 
I don't know. One I was reading one about like more more years in WWE and everything. Yeah, so. like here's yeah. the. Thing. I mean, like look. I mean, realistically, is someone who is like committed, you know, publicly and contractually to AEW going to jump over and work like, WrestleMania this year? No, maybe. that's not happening. Not happening. Not yeah. like uh, has yeah. Kenny Omega done that? Just no. asking yeah, for sword, asking though. for a friend. About Kenny Omega? No, I don't think Kenny Omega. <laughs> I think I think a no. no. I I think a Jericho would be one of those guys that could but like Cody Rhodes is not obviously like he's not yeah. going to leave his own company no, to go no, do no, that no, 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 no. <clears throat> but like yeah he's well, like the VP of talent yeah so he's not going to do it but like I think like I think Jericho Neville should, would be w- welcomed back I think Neville and Jericho fit in that like if Vince was like that they'd be like yeah you can do it I think Chris Daniels could get away with it too oh all right, uh, let me uh, recap our matches here. Yeah, where are we at? Our card. What, what world do we live in? Oh, by the way, our card still has no champions on it. I know. I was going to put a champion on it. Here we go. Yeah, so easy. your whole criticism well, was that we didn't have champions on it. Charlotte should be a champion. And you chose to not put on a champion. <laughs> yeah, but his favorite champion got blocked from being able to be used. Don't forget Yeah, the that. one guy I wanted on the there card. There 12 <laughs> other champions. Hey, uh, and it's not like he's ever used about. anyway. Our truth is still out there. He's, he's going to be used on Mania. Our truth, man. Is anyone going to jump in and use an eliminator right now, or no? That's off the Dave. Right. Dave. Dave. Nah, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. Bobby. I'm going to hold okay. off. All right, he's fair available. enough. All right, the chat rooms are open. The DMs are open. Anyway, um, Podner Bobby, created. Bobby still has one as well. Yeah, I, I, I think I said that. Um, Podner created uh, Ricochet versus Tyler Bate versus Cesaro versus Dean Ambrose. Sorgatron's match, Elias versus the Velveteen Dream. Riz created EC3 versus HHH. Larry created Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. Alex Cars created Mustafa Ali versus DJZ. Brandon created Chelsea Green versus Nikki Cross. I hope you're not upset that I'm calling her Chelsea Green and not the hot mess. Uh, Ty created Drew McIntyre versus Walter versus Samoa Joe, and Marcus created Seth Rollins versus Char Char. So there you go. Jeez. More that to is. come. Talking Mayhem Mania. Yeah, talking See Mayhem then. Mania. And speaking of Mayhem Mania, we were we are steeped in lore, as lore. you say, Marcus. I, I hope you guys keep that forever. And steeped <laughs> in, in history of Mayhem Mania, Mania, this fifth edition of Mayhem Mania. And just like Riz learned, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. And that is that applies to our the friend. History changes every freaking time. Who, who oh. I've been talking wrestling history with on the Twitter lately. And I think you guys should go listen to him as well. Our good friend at uh, ProfessorBuzzKill.com. Uh, thankfully, Bu- Professor Buzzkill makes learning history entertaining and humorous through his blog and podcast. Explore Professor Buzzkill, Buzzkill at ProfessorBuzzkill.com. Sign up for the podcast and go check him out. He's uh, ripping up the myths of history. And uh, and I might be on this show in the near future. We're talking about Gorgeous George a little bit. And uh, we might, might try to do something with that. So stay tuned on that. Check him out, ProfessorBuzzkill.com. Guys, it is time to find out what you learned from wrestling this week. I'm going to go down the line on uh, everybody that's uh, joining us digitally tonight. Uh, first of all, Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week? You always come to me first. We got no, a lot of people. We don't have anything to think about yet. All right, we'll start on the other end. Ty Cross, what did you learn yeah. from wrestling this week? Was it about tag team wrestling? Because you, you did win uh, the first round of a <laughs> tag team tournament on Saturday. Man, I learned System Elite. We still got it. <laughs> We are 1-0 in this tournament, so I learned we still got it. We've been doing this for nine years as a tag team, and we haven't lost a step. So that's what I learned this week. There you also, go. I wasn't expecting to, I wasn't expecting to go first, so I had to make that up off the top of my head. Well, that, you nice. can thank Riz for that. Brandon, what did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> I, I, I learned you have to open the hospital before you wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. True. <laughs> oh man, damn it! You took my father. <laughs> father, what you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that you give the best promos when you're basically half foot out the door and you don't give the fuck anymore. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> man, Mike, what about you? Well, I learned that uh, Becky Lynch is the per- is the first person to hit 
two separate McMahons in back-to-back days since Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm. Riz, you got something. I got something. I learned that Zack Ryder can't spell his own botched name. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Z-E-C-K. He spelled it Z-A-C-H-K. Mm. Or Z A C A Z A C K H. There was definitely an extra mm-hmm. letter in there. Well, he's, well he, did you say at the end of the segment? I can't spell it either. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I can't spell it. Marcus, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, that Brock Lesnar is too good for Mayhem Mania. Oh man, <laughs> Matt Carlin, this is true. too good. I learned that, uh, and this partial credit to my wife. I learned that Charlotte Flair has a Louis Vuitton belt that she absolutely loves because she keeps wearing it on television. If you check my Twitter. Uh, at Mainstream Matt, you will see this. I took screen grab Sorg. At least three weeks, she's worn this Louis Vuitton belt. Maybe she hasn't been home <laughs> together. all I belt. see. <laughs> she's on the road. She's brother. been on the road. On the woo! Road. On the road. <laughs> this Louis Vuitton belt. They, woo! They have, Cost more. Woo! Got, they you make in a year. Travel. She had to go home they and change, man. They have travel schedule the past night. They do. They do. Stuck in uh, snow. Larry, Larry, what did you learn from wrestling? I learned that Eric Rowan is a gift to the world. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. The planet or the world? The world. <laughs> He was giving us one hell of an educational lesson tonight on Galileo. Oh, oh, wait, was he? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. And I want to hear him talk more. <laughs> wow. Well, he is an experienced vintner. So what? There's that. And he, yeah. he also knows how to do the Rubik's Cube. He mm-hmm. does. He does. Um, I learned I learned that you, you, you alluded to this briefly, but I learned... Um, to be the the people that were stuck in traffic with Seamus and Oscar on that road had to have been mo- really interesting. Did you guys see this? The uh, iconic, yes. The, the or the iconic. I didn't see the iconic one. I saw the iconic were there too. I saw a little bit. It was everybody going to SmackDown somewhere in, in, in Washington Yakima. State, I believe. Yeah, from Yakima to Yapapai. Yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know Tina's uh, stuck in the, stuck in that. The Yeti right was now. out there somewhere. The Yeti, <laughs> look out! He's gonna hug you to death. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but no, there was a there was a lot of fun picks. Uh, uh, if you check out the social media for Seamus, from Oscar, from uh, uh, Rusev on on Instagram, um, but uh, no, it, it was it was kind of a fun thing to see. Like they also have road issues. It's not oh, just also one other one other thing that was released. Um, Jack Gallagher released a video, um, about Hideo Tommy's last stand two five live. Oh, really? And it's and it's really cool. Oh. To check that yeah, out. It's, re- it's really, really cool. It's oh. just basically like Tommy talking with Arya Davari about um, how Davari helped the end of his career. Can you do me a favor and toss that over in the group, Mike? I gotta find it. If you come across it. So, uh, yeah. From the chat room, uh, we have plenty in there. Holy crap, guys. Uh, Alex Cars learned that Kenny Omega is still a free agent. Uh, Kyle <laughs> Turner learned that he <laughs> the entrances of halftime heat uh, uh, had more action than the Super Bowl. <laughs> um bradley uh learned that this week that matt connard is being given a dis- disconcerting new gimmick um <laughs> hey, i didn't do it I, nope nope <laughs> nope alex alex miller learned that ricochet and casey mackinac a uh, cute couple oh really casey cat and zero okay. <laughs> what, 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 yeah. is that a spell check or something that happened uh, Tina learned that Corey Graves couldn't do commentary for halftime heat because he was performing the actual Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> oh. I think that's an Adam Levine crack. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know what mm-hmm. happens on sports ball. Oh, it definitely is. Bobby O'J yeah. Town learned that yeah. WWE are cowards for not putting Sky Pirates in the Elimination Chamber tag team title match. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tina confirms, yeah, Yakima to Everett Washington. Yakima. 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 Who's all in yeah. that Elimination Chamber? I ask us, Lord. A lot of people. There's like way too many. Which which well, match? It's like six teams. So the, t- the tag team yeah, one. Yeah. It uh, was. Is it tor- like so? It's a tornado elimination chamber. They're putting two women in each box. Well, it's, it's like last they, time they had. So, but they start with like four women in they the match. Did the tag yeah. Team yeah. Before. yeah. Okay. It's on tag team. It's it's, it's two people per bot. Like and, and, and it's one pin and you're out, right? You yeah. Yeah. Pin both. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 It doesn't really make yeah. sense for a tag team championship match. But yeah. Whatever. Well, I mean, they have cha- championship matches in general, so but yeah, I'm I'm a well, fan it of. It doesn't make sense because there's no tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's okay. just a team match. It's an yeah, inaugur- but also like inaugural. When you do an inaugural thing, it's like this is the best tag team, and it's like, but they didn't do the thing that they're good at. 
<laughs> like being a tag team yeah, at all. Which involves as I'm crowning tag, tag team game. champions. Yeah. It'd be like yeah. it'd be like, oh uh, we're gonna crown new tag team champions by putting them in a battle royal. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, then you're not good at the thing you just became champion. Or becoming of. a number one contender for the tag championship by winning a battle royal. royal. Yeah. Like Yeah. How do you Or how, becoming a number one contender for a singles championship by winning a battle royal. Yeah, that's also dumb. But uh, how do you become a thing? How do you become champion of a thing that you're not doing? Mm-hmm. You're talking about Brock Lesnar, right? Ooh, no. You better yeah. slow your roll. Oh, no. He's a draw. That's all that matters, motherfucker. <laughs> Make some money. That's what. That's all you need to do. Guys, Marcus Mann, what stuff going on with you? Yeah. I'm talking. We're going to talk about it tomorrow because I'm on the show again. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> like the show tomorrow. <laughs> Go check that out. Yeah. We got an intergender panel tomorrow. Marcus Mann's going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a show tomorrow oh, that we're going to do. Yeah. What else? Are you, who, who's coming in for that? Oh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Could just be me. Hmm. No, I assume <laughs> Jinx is going to be here. Uh, I'll, I'll Badger. Jinx and Badger wanted to come Ty to Cross the wants show. To be on. Of course he does. He doesn't have anything else to do with his life. Take care of your wife, Ty. This isn't just an ego grab for me. I have strong opinions on this that I want to express to the world. He, he's. I don't even want to talk to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I have I have banned Ty Cross from my wedding. That's how bad I hate him. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. And he was in my wedding. I was in his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I really like a Gargano Champa thing Gargano going on there. <laughs> we really do. Wow. In reality, I should have asked Connor. To yes. Would have taken it more seriously. Uh, here's the thing. I told you to ask Connor. I tried to bail a bunch of times. Wow. <laughs> should we Should we be airing this right now? I don't know. This is <laughs> serious. <laughs> You have no idea how drunk no, I was during this wedding. Not anyway, only should we be airing this? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to wrap should this up. Anyway. Uh, Marcus Mann, where can people find you online? Uh, find me online uh, at Marcus Mann, two N's, uh, Marcus Mann, BHS, uh, Facebook, Marcus Mann, uh, Instagram, at the Markman 6 I got way too many different handles. Get used to it. Uh, and then Rise Wrestling, it's all at Rise underscore wrestling. Uh, we got a show coming up March 2nd. Uh, which will crown our first ever tag team champions in an actual tag team match. Crazy. I know, right? Um, So we're going to do that. (laughs) Uh, And then March, I might be revealing this date. I don't know. I don't know if we confirmed it. March 15th is the next Uprise. Uh, I I don't think it's on my calendar, but I'll put it in there. I think that's what we're looking at. Um, So we'll have another Uprise show in March. Um, April, we don't have a rise date yet, but I'll confirm it that soon. And then I really want to plug... Um, if you haven't got your tickets yet, I really want to plug Remix Wrestling. Uh, Remix Pro, which I do commentary at, has become one of my favorite places to go down in Marriott, Ohio. Uh, this card is super stacked. Uh, it's got Christopher Daniels versus Facade on it. It's got um, uh, Penelope Ford. It's got Kimberly. It's got uh, Victoria. Um, it's got uh, Madison Rain. Um Jock Sampson. Who doesn't want to watch Jock Sampson Guys, wrestle? Seriously. Um, who? Oh my God! Who else is on the show? I'm trying to think of everyone. I mean, it's just uh, DJ Z versus uh, Gory. Um, it just continues to like pour up like name after name after name. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. Uh, April 20th down in Marriott, Ohio. Tickets go very very fast. I think they only have like two or three second row tickets left, and then we're getting into like third row in GA. They've already sold everything out already. Um, it's for a, it's, it's a fundraiser for the Humane Society down there. And it's a really, really great time. If you haven't been to a remix show yet, um, check it out. They only run every six months. They only run twice a year. So these events are always stacked with some of like the biggest name indie talent, uh, that you can find. Um, I don't know the last time Christopher Daniels did an independent match, right? It's been a very, very long time and, since he's done an independent match. And I believe uh, a little background on that, that it is featured in the Marking Out documentary mm-hmm. that is uh, Last I Knew freely available to Prime members on yes. Amazon. Yeah. So uh, definitely go check it out. You will recognize some people if you listen to the show. <laughs> There's like, uh, Team Storm will be on the show. I know they're yeah. uh, friends of the show. Not friends of me. Uh, yeah. Jackson Argos is a complete piece of garbage. Uh <laughs> He is. <laughs> he is. He beat up my best friend. Uh, and now my best friend has to, had to have knee surgery today. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's a piece of and, trash. And the best of Jack Pollock, who did have the surgery. Uh, yeah, Sounds like it went well. Yes. And, uh, but Gory's on the show. Facade's on the show. Jock Sampson's on the show. Uh, DJ Z, who's a regular around the area, he's going to yeah. be on there. And it's just fantastic to see. 
Um, uh, so like definitely check it out. I always try to promote remix as much as possible. Adam Johnson does a phenomenal job down there. So I push those, that product as hard as I can. There's a cat on my, in, in my view over here, just to roll through a thank you, everybody. Mainstream Matt, a Larry at dark forge studios. Co yep. Ty cross. You can big bad Ty cross. I believe it is on social media, Matt, uh, mad Mike, Riz with Riz Plays Games, Dave Ponder with Tiny Shutter Podcast, and Brandon joining us from KC as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Until next time, and keep a lookout for Talking Mayhem Mania on the YouTubes and your podcast feeds. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.